All right, in this video, I want to talk about uh, setting up deferred decals, specifically for mesh decals instead of projected. Uh, let's just quickly look at what we have in Unreal. So these are mesh decals floating on the surface of this geometry. Um, normally, when you see a decal, it's placed in the environment, right, and then positioned. Let's just fake that we're placing this like you would normally. And you usually place the decal and, that, and then you're good to go. Um, but what what we're gonna look at is just making it as a mesh. So I'm gonna show you how I set up the, the model for ZBrush, how we bake that all out, um, just like a quick overview, because I'm pretty sure you guys can connect the dots, and then uh, getting the shader set up. And yeah, so let's, let's take a look. So if we, where we're really gonna start is in Blender. So what we'd have is a cube right, this guy. And this is the one we're gonna bring into ZBrush and just damage up these these four edges. And the reason I say four edges is because I want four different types of damage. Maybe one's softer, one's a little bit more chipped up than another one. One's maybe pretty light. And then maybe another variant of those three in here. So this is our, this is our mesh. Um, you can see that we already have these pieces here, but I'm gonna dupe this off just so we can so I can explain what these are. So these these are eventually going to be what you bake to. If we switch this to uh, the UV editor, we go and edit. You can see that I've placed these uh, at increments inside of the zero to one space for the idea of each of these edges being baked. Now, in order to get these meshes, uh, I just what's it, control, double click an edge here, and then bevel. And you can see the bevel is behaving strangely. Uh, normally, I believe you have a shape set to five or 0.5 and the segment is one. So that's your normal bevel. We just add another segment and then we change the shape. Instead of going to zero, we go all the way to one. And now you have these edges. So with those edges, you can just uh, accept that, switch to face mode, invert, and then uh, delete those faces. And now you have these. Now, in order to get like a really nice clean uh, bake where the sides are flat and but then this area is, is rounded, what we're actually doing is let's grab these, make these um, where are we at here? I'm gonna make these smooth, and then uh, for anyone who's wondering, this is machine tools, this is free. Uh, smooth is just the same as if you were in face mode and you right click and you set uh, shade smooth. Um, and then make sure your auto smoothing is turned on, which, where's that at? Always, always forget, there it is. Just set it up to all the way to 180, just so you're sure. Um, and you can see it's pretty soft. So you're gonna get some normal wrapping issues uh, when you have the decal on the mesh. I'm not gonna demo that because it's gonna make the video longer. But uh, what you actually end up doing is just grabbing these, these edges here these outside edges, beveling those. And now you can see it's kind of like weighted normals, but you don't have to store the weighted information, right? You're uh, just adding an extra bevel on the inside here, which forces these faces to be flat before they actually start transitioning to that rounding effect. So with that made, you unwrap them and place them in the zero to one space incrementally. Um, if you can do it like 0.25, you could then, in a shader, maybe set it up so that your UVs are here in the shader, and then you can move it incrementally 0.25, and the UVs will offset to the next one. So you could set it up in the shader to be a little bit more fancy. I did not do that. I'm just being really basic about it. Um, so I take this, bring this into ZBrush. Uh, where are we at here? ZBrush, where are you? There you are. So we bring this into ZBrush, I chip up these sides, and then I brought it into Substance Painter, which, I mean, you could use any baker. Um, I've sculpted each of these sides. Uh, you will get a like seam problem where the bake, oops, where the bake ends and starts at the bottom top. You could make the cube a little taller and shorter or a little longer on the bottom and the top, and then just add a wrap. Um, Let's see if we can just curve wrap mode. If you turn this up to one, you could sculpt here and it would start to show up down here and you're just adding a little bit of geometry on both sides in order to make sure that uh, you have room to sculpt on. 
I didn't set that up either. I just, after the bake, I went into Photoshop and just hid the seam. As a, just as a personal preference, I just did it that way. There's a couple of ways you can do that stuff, right? Anyway, so we baked those all out. Then I get our normal map. Um, I did set up an alpha to just cut the edge of it. And because of that, uh, let's see if we can texture. So we have our, our normal here. And then you can see the alpha is just making it so it's a clean cut. And there's no extra normal information happening. Uh, the main reason I did that is because when, when you have a decal like that, the normal is overriding the normal under it. So if you have any like coarse normal information like this, you can see it becomes smooth in here because it's just looking at the normal uh, of the decal. If you wanted this to work between the two, you'd probably have to set this in world space and then this one also in world space, then they would align. But they decals override, deferred decals override the normal from under them. Uh, unless you set up the shader in a more advanced way to try and blend them together. But if I remember correctly, it's all overrides uh, in the deferred normal channel. So with that said, uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at the material. Material. So I just called it MM underscore decals. It's like master material. And I've just got the normal hair because there's an alpha. I had to do a multiply by a two, 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 and then subtract by one in order to um, get the proper normal that you would usually get when you uh, export out a normal map. Uh, so we've got our opacity in the alpha and then a normal here. And the important thing is when you select this guy, you just wanna make sure that it says deferred here. Usually it's surface, you just set it to deferred and uh, translucent. Now, now you have that decal, right? Maybe you expose this so that it's uh, so that it's a parameter, and then you can swap that out for any normal you want later. If it's a master material, you probably want to be doing that. Uh, and then you can go ahead and just right click and make instance versions of that. What people, like I was saying earlier, what people usually do is they're placing decals in the environment. And what we actually want to be doing is instead of placing in the environment, we want it on a mesh. And it's as simple as just applying it to the mesh. So if we look at Blender again real quick here, and we go here, you can see I've uh, selected the edges of this, uh, this mesh here. Let's, let's just dupe this over here. What I've done is actually switch the edge mode. We'll grow this. Let's just deselect these back ones so we can get a better visual of what we're describing here. I bevel these, right? And then I'm going in and deleting these ones. If you shift G, you can select a uh, similar uh, area, similar. And then I just delete those faces and um, these faces, right? And now we have our, our, our decals, our decal meshes. I'm just gonna separate these out, that way all the vertices separate between them, and then I can UV these accordingly. So like you have a little bit of bleed here that you will probably need to go and extend outwards like this. Uh, getting these meshes all set up, you're gonna wanna watch what it looks like uh, afterwards uh, in the mesh and uh, in Unreal, I mean, and just see how much fighting is happening. Uh, I do have the modifier on it still for beveling because the original mesh is beveled as well. And then it's just a matter of applying the UVs, right? So let's let's join these all together, Control J. So this is one mesh. We'll grab all these and we see the UVs here, right? Let's just go to faces, select all the faces, go in here, hit U and unwrap. Um, why are we not seeing? Oh, there, that's why. Okay, we just wanna see the ones we have selected. So we've got these ones selected. You can see they're unwrapped here. Looks like we've got something is skewing. You can see here. Let's just isolate that real fast and find out where that is. Oh, there it is. 
let's bring this down. Where to see snapping? There we go. Grab all these guys again. Let's just look at these guys, and then we'll isolate it. So it's we're just looking at these these UVs. Select all those. Unwrap. Unwrap. Make sure the orientation is correct on these. Oh, I still have the another problem over here. What is that one? Is that over on this side? Yeah, it is. Let's just bring that down as well. Okay, we'll grab these again. Unwrap. Cool. So orientation-wise, I'm going to just right-click on this bar between the two windows and um, horizontally, or not horizontally, flip, swap them. So right-click, press S, and it'll swap the two viewports. So what we want to do, if I press N here, you'll get the side panel. And uh, I'm using Toolkit, uh, UV Toolkit 2. Uh, if you just look up UV Toolkit 2.0, in Google, you'll find it. It's uh, just an add-on. I think it's like nineteen dollars. It's totally worth it, though, if you're if you're switching to Blender and you need UVs. Because what what I want to do is like, so you have all these guys, right? And we've UV'd the the texture. Let's uh, let's actually just apply that material really quick. Decal, right? So you can see now we've got our decals here. Let's grab all these and. These are vertical, right? So these guys need to be vertical, which is why I've rotated them. Now you can see if I press L on this that they are merged together. And it's just like each one of these is one of one of these uh these groups, right? So by selecting all of these, making sure they're all vertical, you can then go in and vertically align. It'll be vertices, but you just go islands, press down, and then all left. And now you can see they're all perfectly overlapping. And then you can just position these over the top of these. And you just want to find the, the center line for that. And then uh, then you should be good to go. Let me see if, uh, yeah. So if we right cl click on this, press S again to swap, you can see now we've got our edge decals all in position. And that's how I'm doing this nice. It's uh, it's because I swapped the material on the on the original mesh. Let's see if I can undo that. Oh, I accidentally nudged it all as well. No. I'll just snap that on the grid there. We'll just delete these so that we're not looking at that. But that's how I'm creating all of these, right? And with those floating, you can see the alpha in here displayed pretty nicely so you can get a sense of like where shapes are going to be. Um, and I believe that is this piece. We shift to L and rotate the light around. That is this piece here. And uh, yeah, you can see the edge damage is happening. The decals are working correctly. And the only thing you have to do is, uh, at least in Blender, you have these. These are all parented. Or are they? Wait, what? Hang on here. Let's locate that. Where are these guys at? Oh yeah, see, that's not good. That's supposed to be shift drag that in there. These are aren't parented anymore either. That's uh so you want all these parented. If you see in the previous video um where I'm talking about the wall pieces and how I'm exporting them out using the Blender to Unreal add-on, they all need to be parented inside of this. Was this oh no, I just added those to the wrong. Oh, I see why. It's a variant. Anyways, so you get the idea. The What I want to be doing is making sure that all of these, these guys have the right material. If they're all parented and then you import it all together into Unreal, it'll all come in as a single asset like, like this piece here. Let me just go around here. And the only thing left to do is to apply the decal shader directly to it. And you can highlight it if you need to see which one you're looking at. Uh, let me drag this out here and then go back to here. And you can be like, all right, decal shader needs to go there. And then it should just work. And yeah, that's uh, that's how I'm doing the edge decals for these guys. Cool. All right. That was, uh, that was a little longer than uh, usual, but uh, hopefully that was useful. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.